your government don't care if you're happy. I know we don't study happiness at school. And the reason is, is because you live in a capitalist society and your education system is not designed to make you happy. Your education system is designed to make you employable. Punjab is being ethnically cleansed. I know it was done through basically, uh, first through genocide, and then secondly through drugs, and now through immigration. The money for your potia uh, was three times as much. Than the Shastas. Than the Shastas. Wow. And that was done intentionally because the Punjabi that we read taught now in Punjabi schools is a colonialized version of Punjabi. Sikhi is basically you learning from the Panch Pyare, taking Amrit and getting Saskra Simran. Basically, whatever Seva Guru Sahib in his Khalsa Panth needs, you are there, Tiyar Pratiyar, ready to do it. <laughs> ਵਾਹੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫੇਰ ਖੁੱਲੇ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਤੇ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈਗਾ ਅੱਜ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਭਾਈ ਜਗਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਪੰਥ ਦੇ ਮਹਾਨ ਵਿਦਵਾਨ ਸੇਵਾਦਾਰ ਵੀ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਪਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਅ ਫਿਊ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਇਨਕਲੂਡਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਵਰਲਡ ਸਿੱਖ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਦਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਫਾਊਂਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਚੈਰਿਟੀ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਐਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਪਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਅ ਫਿਊ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਟ ਆਈ ਹਵ ਕਮ ਟੂ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਮਾਰਜ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਓਵਰ ਦਾ ਇਅਰਸ because i kept my gears in 1992 okay uh, born in uk grown up in uk um got involved in community stuff uh, from an early age around 13 14 um we saw a lot of issues growing up and because i was a martial artist we got involved in in tackling some of them issues with various groups etc mainly around grooming and various other things so that was around at the age of about 14 um and are are you second generation um yes. in uk so your parents came around the is it is it quite interesting cuz my uh, great grandparents one was uh, a babra kali who was shaheed for the pant he was hanged by the british okay on my grandmother's side then on my grandfather's side um interestingly they had to they used to come to england in the 1930s and 1940s and at that time appa hon uh, you know most young people live in punjab o kende hunde ke bar swar gaya o sade jehde buzurg sege o kende hunde si bar jail ya and so oh they used to come in the 1930s and 1940s and they would spend like 6 years working in uk on um, various jobs and then they would go back and just build the biggest kothi in the bend and just buy a few more lands and, yeah. and that's where they were but in the 19th 1965 my father came out of punjab into uh, england and got married in england and then uh, i was born in 1974 so when you look at our jo sadikri immigrant journey uh, of most of us that are in the uk and uh, this is a generalization huh um is that a sijere a lot of uk came from dwaba and uh, and most of us came in the what i would say is 60s 70s that most of the population the mass migration really happened at that time yeah. then when you look at north america is more 70s and 80s and 90s and yeah uh, 80s and onward and uh, and now when you look at australia it's more 2000 onwards and and so all of us are in different timings of our immigration journey what it is is that here in north america you have a tremendous amount of talent and you have tremendous kind of potential but because we are now second generation we're now going on to third generation and fourth generation and we've had to realize back in the late 80s early 90s that we can't rely on our godwaras to provide solutions for our community problems so we had to then take the jumiwari of our pant on our own shoulders and become very solution based as a as a nojwan community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean as someone who's second generation as well. I mean my came my parents came around the 80s 90s as well. And um after 90s and um one thing I can say confidently is that growing up, you know, like just the um the ability to sit down and have the resources that I understand in my gurdwara, they, I I could confidently say that they were not there. Mm. Either they were forced on me in a language that I didn't under, quite understand yet, but you know, um it's there's obviously a language barrier there's some obviously gurdwara politics that get in the way um but all these things ultimately affect your upbringing into sikhi mm. and so you know like the gurdwara is something that we look at that should be the one place we go to for sok and for answers 
not for more questions, you know. Anji, Godore is very pavitra, no? And and sometimes we um, overlook that. I talk a bit about that in the parenting course, no? How do we make our Godore pavitra again, no? But as a, what Sanu told you, Sochandi Loriana, Ke Sadna Ki Hoya, from a young age, we saw another community because when you go to UK, you probably got about, I would say, about maybe seven to eight hundred thousand Sikhs. And and then we have a Muslim community, which is maybe, I would say, now about, probably about four million. Okay. And so in the same towns, we're outnumbered normally about four to one. Mm-hmm. And the kids go to the same schools. And while my parents' generation dealt with a lot of racism, National Front, skinheads, and various other things, my generation was more clashing because the Gore, you know, we didn't really see him as that tough. Mm-hmm. And it was more us and the other community, the Muslim community, because we were very against anyone selling drugs to our community. Mm-hmm. I know. And, uh, and so we took a stand against that. I know, and the groups, names like Shiri Punjab and them kind of names get handed about. Yeah. And in them days, it was very unofficially like that. I know. But the key thing came down to where I was growing up in Slough is a large Sikh community, a large Muslim community. And we saw they were selling drugs to our uh, BBN, they were selling drugs to our kids. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to stamp it out. Yeah. And yeah. Even, even today, I think there's obviously, you know, we hear news like very recently that they're still bullying and these types of like interferences in our community going on um, there is and as a result the uk community is very uh m- what i would say is in virtually i can't think there's many towns that doesn't have a godora which doesn't have a, a gym which has got mixed martial arts which has got some kind of uh taekwondo or kickboxing and everything else so our kids having to realize that if you want to survive in uk Our community is very good educationally and very good financially. Um, but we basically have to, re- we've realized that we have to make our kids tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anna? And and that's the only way because we don't have guns like you guys have here. They're banned. Everything's done by hand. And so it's basically hand-to-hand fighting. It's this, And it was a lot worse before 9-11. After 9-11, what happened is that all these Western governments clamped down heavily on Muslim organizations. Mm-hmm. And uh, that we were basically having issues with. And um, and it seemed to have gone down now. But the other big factor is, since in many of our cities we've created Khalsa schools, and I think there's 11 of them now. In UK? And, in UK. Oh. And they're government funded. And this is one of the things I think America Sikh community needs to look at. Because you guys are paying a lot of taxes. Yeah. And your government is basically funding Christian and Jewish schools. And as a community, you need to vocalize that. Why can't we have Sikh schools that are funded, you know, Definitely. at the end of through mean, our if taxes? If we're paying taxes, yeah, we should have our, you know, like resources And as well. we have that in UK. They're not perfect, but they're far better than what we had before. Mm-hmm. Because basically our kids go to an environment which is drug-free, generally bullying-free. Um, they do, uh, uh, you know, they have to do ardas every morning. They get hukumnama every morning. So they get introduced a lot more to in terms of having a relationship with Guru Sahib mm-hmm. from a young age. And generally, we think they're a very big positive development because the amount of issues we were having in our community have reduced since the Khalsa schools have been built. So these Khalsa schools, are they, I mean, you said they're funded by the government, but are there... Uh, government employees that run those schools as well or is it run by community leaders yeah we call them faith schools okay and yes. so they have the national curriculum which everyone has and the government has allowed hindus to build their schools christians to build their schools muslims to build their schools etc as long as they stick to the national curriculum and then you can have additional classes which teaches about your language your culture your your religion etc but the main thing is is that it creates a safe space mm-hmm. for our kids Now, one of the things I find here in America, um, while in certain areas in the central belt of California, you've got quite large communities, but what I saw in the camps and everything, I met a lot of kids that are uh, L.A., Bay Area, but generally in other cities as well, when I was in Virginia, when I was in Indiana, and various other things, you know, where there's no real cluster living. And I think in for immigrant communities, cr- cluster living is something that they should look at the Muslim community and Jewish community do it. Whereas you know that basically, because I meet kids that say that I, I was the only Sikh kid in the school. Yeah. That's uh, tough. Yeah, I mean, I'm a prime example of that. It was me and my brother in our elementary school. Yeah. So, so 
Huge identity crisis. Huge identity crisis. So really, our parents should really be starting thinking as a community, we should be having discussion. Get a laka sambo. And that's basically pick an alaka. You've got all these alaka where you've got new houses. And as a community, you pick a laka and you basically all move there. Your kids play out together. They grow up together. They all go to the same schools. And, uh, and you basically allow a generation to grow up together and they have that kind of strength. Mm-hmm. And uh, otherwise... Because the identity crisis, what we find in America now, I'm in the World Sikh Parliament, and uh, the World Sikh, World Sikh Parliament has had a number of uh, yearly, it was delayed a bit with COVID, but the first ever meeting we had was a G20 in Birmingham. Mm. And uh, so that was, we asked for 20 most active people from 20 countries, and I was one of the ones selected for UK. Okay. And, uh, and at that time, the three days of discussions was that we should basically now get to a point where um, we start looking at a will seek parliament and a will seek bank because we need to have our own policies. Mm-hmm. We can't wait for the Shoromani committee. I don't want to trust the future of Sikhi to a Shoromani committee. Yeah, yeah. and uh, especially one which is is so government controlled. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we are a religion, and you will never no other religion will tolerate that one alaka. It's like it's like us saying that California can control the whole of Christianity. You know, other people think it's laughable. Yeah. And uh, true, our ducks are there. You know? But not all our ducks are in Punjab. You know, two are outside of Punjab. But you, if you go to Patna Seb or you go to Hazur Seb, you've got more population in Vancouver. You've got more population in Toronto. You've got more population in UK, California, Melbourne, various other places. Because Maharaj Kirpa have been able to talk everywhere. Mm. You know? And you've been doing this for like countless years now. 30 decades. years now. 30 years. Wow. I know. And so Maharaj Kirpa, there's barely a, a country or in Laka where Sikhs live that haven't had a chance to actually vichy there. You know? mm-hmm. and, um, and so we've got to realize that we can't allow one Alaka to control the whole of the future of our Sikhi. We should have a voice. And for almost 15 years, we've had uh, numerous conversations with the Shomani Committee saying that NRI should have a voice there. And they will never allow it. They'll maybe have one or two token people, which is useless, you know, because mm-hmm. um, we're not naive, you know. Yeah. And yeah. so we have to realize that we, as a global NRA community, you know, NRA is probably the wrong word because we're not really non, but I'd say seek diaspora. Mm-hmm. We should have a pivotal voice on the future of our Sikhi. Yeah, definitely. definitely. You know? And hence we created the World Sikh Parliament, which is under Jatha Jaktar Singh Hawara. And so at that time, you saw the Sarva Khalsa happening and passing for the World Sikh Parliament. And so Jathar Jaktar Singh Hwara did a calling to all the Pantak activists around the world to come together. And so at that time, we came together in New York. Anna, this was in 2015, I believe? Or yeah, or uh, with uh, Dr. Amarji Singh um, and oh, many of the Gursikhs there. Anji. And it was good because we had seen some of these activists Anna, and we now got to meet them. And we realized that there's so much commonality in what we want to do and what we're thinking and et cetera. And everyone has their own areas. Mine is more education, you know, mm-hmm. and other people have theirs. You and handle the department of, or some department of education in this. That's right. Hanji. Thiege. That's the seva I've been given. Thiege, thiege. And uh, so basically after New York, we had uh, Paris, we've had um, Derby, we've um, had Toronto recently. So at Toronto, one of the bintia that was done to myself is, and we had this discussion over two days, is what we look at is that the largest identity crisis that we are seeing is in the youth in USA. Mm. Anna? Yeah. In the youth in Canada, have some identity crisis, but not on the level. It's the separation of the community, I think. Because like if you look at Canada, cities in Canada, the Punjabi population is very close-knit. Mm. Even though, yeah, they are part of, like, they're outside of Punjab, but even in the cities they've settled down if you go to let's say surrey for example it's almost like punjab right you mm. you have the feeling that you're like surrounded by your own people mm. i don't think you get that in america you know i don't think you get that but we don't get that in uk either you know? okay and the thing is in uk so going just to finish off this thing with the world seat parliament they specifically asked me to, to basically spend more time in america okay and as a result i came here last year Andy, Andy. i started doing the seat parenting course now here and other talks that i do so just to give you a bit of background, um, I kept my case in 1992. I was quite westernized, but I went to the Goddor every week. My parents were very Sikhi focused. You know? And um, we had a pride in our community, you know? even though we didn't know much about Sikhi. You know? And we would fight for our community. You know? We were the lead and we would stand for our community. You know? 
And then I went to a, a camp called Khalsa Camp to recruit more Monday for us. But I went to that camp and I met so many beautiful Gursiks that at the end of the camp, I thought I need to now, um, I really felt that I discovered my guru. And I, so after that, I kept my case. And then I started doing a bias with Gursiks, etc. And my mind focused away from martial arts and fighting to more in terms of building Jeevan and, uh, and mm-hmm. having a bigger impact on what we're doing in our community. And then I looked at our community and I thought, the prachar is, you know, it happens, but it's, I don't find it relevant to me. And so I thought, I started writing my own lectures. So I've now got 120 lectures and that on, written very, various, on topics. various topics all over Gurmat, from history to various other things. And But I write the lectures that I wanted to hear as a Monna person growing up in the West who goes to a Godora. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then when I started doing them in the Godware, we started getting such a huge response and, uh, that it just carried on, carried on, and it, it sort of mushroomed into something which is now bigger where I get called all the way around the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so basically, as a person, I believe that our Sangha is, is highly intelligent, and I think we sometimes underestimate them. I think our prachar that needs to be in the Godwara needs to be dual language. You know? Because basically, you will only learn Punjabi if you have PR for Punjabi. Yeah. And sometimes you have to s- speak in English to create that PR in Punjabi. So I'll give you an example. I went to school, to Punjabi school, for uh, 11 years. The only thing I learned in Punjabi school, and this is nothing to put down the teachers because they were all very nice, was who was the youth in my town so that when we needed to fight, we all knew who each other, but other time, we can go and play football with them yeah. in a Sunday evening. And uh, we didn't learn Punjabi because we never realized what was the need for it. You know? And then, so what it is, is that when I actually came into Sikhi, I learned how to read Punjabi in two weeks. Because when you have that kind of interest and you want to basically do something, you just put your mind to it and you just get it done. Yeah. You know? And this is the whole thing. This is why I think kinda, a lot of Punjabi schools need to rethink what they're doing. Firstly, they don't teach, I don't think they teach a, a correct syllabus because I think they still teach a colonialized version of Punjabi. But that would be a different topic we can discuss on. Yeah. Kinda, because I think there's a lot of research now in terms of what is the best way of learning Punjabi that will take you straight into becoming a bhati of the Guru Granth Sahib. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Professor Gurinder Pal Singh and many other people are doing good work on that. Yeah. And, uh, but the second thing is, is that I believe that uh, if you say to a child in any Punjabi school that you don't need to come to Punjabi school if you do a full search part, that child won't come to Punjabi school for 11 years. Within a year, they'll do a full search part. Yeah. And by doing that, they've already learned Punjabi. And you've got them to do a search part. And anyone that does one search part never stops doing search part. Mm-hmm. Because Maharaj di Parskala hundi, Maharaj di Kirpa hundi, mm. and they fall in love with their guru. Yeah. And, uh, well, and I think we should yeah. have a different approach to Punjabi schools and make them more Gurmani based and actually say to children the idea because uh, sorry if I'm going to go off on a tangent no, no, go ahead. Yeah. if we look at all our ancestry you know, we were all ja Hindus, ja Muslims at some know, point yeah. at some point, you know? and then someone in our ancestry made a decision that I want to get to Sachkhand you know? and so they came into the house of Guru Nanak so they converted from either being Hindu or Muslim and they came and took Amrit. They could have been at the time of Guru Sahib and they took Charampal, or it could have been the time of Mir Manu, which means that coming into the Panth meant death. But at some point, they came into the Panth. That person made a fundamental decision, and it might have been a Singh or a Bibi, made a fundamental decision that's changed all your family lineage. And that decision was based on the fact that they wanted to get to Sachkhand. Hana? And as a result, today you go to a Godwara rather than we go to a Mandar or a Masid. Hana? Yeah. So it's a fundamental change, a decision. And if we look at that today, we don't talk to our kids about that you can go to such kind. This is one of the fundamental things I teach in the Sikh Parenting Course. We should be talking to our kids that, you know, you come here so that you can go to such kind. And then your children will ask, well, mum, dad, how do I get to such kind? You know, what is the path? And you say, the path is written in the Sahib Siddhu Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And this is why we need to study it. That's why we're not just mata taking to it. We should do search part of it. 
है ना वेल हाउ डू आर रीड द गुरु ग्रंथ साहब जी वेल बेसिक दिस वाई यू टू कम गेट संथिया दिस इज वाई वी डू कीर्तन दिस इज वाई वी हैव द रस बिकॉज एज अ सोल वी नीड टू हैव आत्मा दी खुराक है ना वी नीड टू बी फीडिंग आवर सोल्स एंड वी फीड इट विद द द गुरबानी ऑफ द श्री गुरु ग्रंथ साहब जी है ना and then they'll say well well how do i read that bani well this is why you need to go to punjabi school and this is why you need punjabi and you've given that them that that journey you've taken them to the destination and you showed them how to drag that back to punjabi we never have that discussion as a result kids go to punjabi school and they just see it as a hindrance to their weekends yeah you know it's, and it's if like we a, say to yeah. them no this is your destination point and it's a beautiful destination point and then kids will actually they're intelligent enough i believe all our kids in the west generally they're so intelligent if you give them the destination they will go along that they will travel they enjoy the journey so much more yeah you know and that we sh- we need to be better at communicating with our thing and the whole idea of the seek parenting course because i've been doing seva for 30 years you know in 1992 i did my first talks you know and now we're still doing talks you know <coughs> and in that year uh, in them years i've seen thousands of young people thousands of young gursikhs all over the world from hong kong to australia to africa to europe to uk and america you know <coughs> and the thing is with all of these young people and generally our community you know we have a huge interest in sikhi if it's explained properly The problem is sometimes we're terrible at explaining some th- aspects of it or we mix it up. And I remember when I newly came into Sikhi, it was a Gora Singh who was a very spiritual Singh that's we know in in Kushif Charan Singh in UK, you know. I was listening to him talk and he said something really uh, I was having this conversation with him afterwards. And he knew I'd start talking, you know. And we were just comparing stuff. And he said to me, "Sikhi is very beautiful, but Punjabi is complicated." <laughs> and yeah. and that just made total sense to me and this is what i go back when i do my talks and because people in the godware will build them based on caste people in the godware will have the the most random kind of debates on the most random things people divide themselves into jathebandiya or families or towns or uh, alaqe in punjab or any random thing that they can do because as human beings we're very good at creating boxes yeah and and then we want everybody in a boxes and then we want to clone people that you can just be like this and if we can't clone you properly then basically there must be something wrong with you you know i don't believe in any of that i think that's all nonsense mm-hmm. and uh, the way i look at it is sikhi is the relationship between atma and paramatma and sikhi doesn't need to be complicated sikhi is basically you learning from the panch pyare taking amrit and getting saskara simran and doing your swasa doing so much simran that you basically build a jeevan and through your jeevan you make it so beautiful that every time you talk you have impact every time you do and you should be tyar par tyar so that basically whatever seva guru saheb in his khalsa panth needs you are there tyar par tyar ready to do it you know yeah. and we have so much beautiful perspectives on sikhi and we have so many different communities in sikhi and collectively we should all be better at communicating with each other right. i find too many people in apan don't travel enough and as a result they're stuck in their little boxes based around their towns or their groups or their godwaras etc and as a panth we need to be better at communicating and mixing with each other and then we really need to be more pro, uh, solution based yeah our discussions should be more solution based and we should be looking at what is the problems that we have as young people that you are guys living in now in california or generally in usa and you got to be thinking well how are we going to have sikhi as a, uh, a solution to that Mm-hmm. So the talk I did today at the Godwara I was explaining in that time we're living in a capitalist world and we're living in a world where the mind is having to work harder and harder we think we're going to live as long as our buzurgs but we got to realize our buzurgs were were basically working in an environment which was very physical jobs so their bodies were tough but their minds were quite stress free yeah you know and they basically as a result they're fine till their 80s 90s and everything doesn't mean we're going to be like that because we're desk based yeah and our jobs are very mental totally and different I, environment and, yeah. I, and so we got realize yeah we are going to have high levels of diabetes we are going to have high levels of posture problems we're generally going to have better, more health issues but because our bodies are our jobs and everything about this world is getting faster and faster and faster if we don't use nitanam and amritvela to slow us down then as i see in my care home so i run a care home and it's a quite established care home it's a multi award winning care home in uk yeah. we were the only care home in our area that didn't lose anyone through covid 
and I have over 100 staff that work for me there. So so you're a medical doctor by profession? I'm not a doctor, but I basically have a health management qualification. Okay. Okay. So you work in the medical industry? Yeah. Now. So it's a private practice. It's a, it's a private nursing home. Mm-hmm. And we specialize in cancer care, brain injuries. We specialize in dementia care. Uh, and okay. uh, palliative care. So uh, lots of mental issues and things like yeah. that, you know, mental And so health. I see people when they basically, uh, the average age of people that I had in my care home when I started 17 years ago was uh, 85. And now I see the people with dementia becoming younger and younger and younger. You know, up to the age of 50, I've got some people now in my care home that are 50 years old that have dementia. You know? mm-hmm. And then you look at it, is why do these people have dementia? It's because, and we study their history, you know? their life history so that we look at them as an individual you know and then often they have really good jobs they're very well educated so we fit on all them brackets you know and then sometimes they have substance abuse particularly marijuana which is becoming more and more common here in western countries Mm -hmm. you know and then um the other thing is a lot of them lived in silence because of family breakdowns so all of them factors together meant that they're getting dementia and we got realized unless we're not the way i see is this that Sikhi is more relevant today than it's ever been in the past because the Guru, Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji talks to our brain. He's talking to our man. He's talking to us to keep away from karma, Kru, the Lord, and God. Hmm. And because our jobs are so mental, you know, we should be using the life skills and the solutions that the Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji is teaching us and we should be looking at how we can use them, that, that, them life skills to improve our lives. And so we can better navigate through this capitalist world that we're stuck in. Yeah. And, uh, because capitalism has failed. And, uh, but the problem is, is that socialism, communism and everything else has failed. And we as a human race haven't really figured out what's a better way of living. And so we're stuck with capitalism. But uh, we know in UK that 60% of the population suffers from depression. So that's not a great statistic for a, w- a way of life. And the uh, mm-hmm. way I explained it in the talk today... so is that your government don't care if you're happy. Yeah. And most people, you know, if you ask most people what they want in life, they want to be happy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, your government don't care if you're happy. And, uh, we don't study happiness at school. We don't. And, uh, we don't study how to be wise. We don't study how to be humble. These aren't topics that are talked yeah. about normally. You know? and, and if most people want to be happy, why are these things not discussed? Mm-hmm. And, uh, instead, what we, uh, what we uh, um, are taught is math, physics, geography, biology, etc., Mm-hmm. And the reason is, is because you live in a capitalist society and your education system is not designed to make you happy. Your education system is designed to make you employable. Mm-hmm. And so you can work for 40, 50, 60 years and keep paying taxes. And as a result, they run their governments yeah. the, through their tax yeah. systems. The, the rat race, I think, is what the they call The rat race it. of life. So we have to realize that outside our education system that we're in, and that we need to use another education system where we learn how to be happy where we learn how to be wise, where we learn how to be humble. And for me, the education system is learning the Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Because Guru Sahib has very conveniently for us taken the most amazing knowledge from the greatest souls that have ever appeared on this earth, our Guru Sahiban, our Bhagats and everything, and put that in a very concise form in the Sahib Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. The problem we're having is too much as a community, all we're doing is jor seb and putting ramale on there. Instead, what we should be doing is engaging it. We should be engaging it. We should be reading it. We should be discussing it. We should be basically uh, vicharing it. We should be doing abhyas on it. But when you read the Gurbani, it goes through each stage of everything we should be doing. But the last stage is Gurbani Baniye. We should be becoming Gurbani. We can only do that through doing Sej part. Mm. No? And so... One of my things I push a lot in the Sikh parenting course is encouraging everyone to start doing search parts. And, uh, and that is very important. If we don't engage our guru, we will never become part of that guru. And uh, we have to engage our guru through doing search parts, through doing kirtan, through doing that. And if we look at it, we are a mind, a body, and a soul. And, uh, and in terms of our mind and body, most of the things, they're temporary. They're both going to basically d- disappear. Our soul is the only one that's permanent. And I, but everything we do on a daily basis, from our education to our food to our exercise to our entertainments and everything else that we do, is all based around our mind and our body. And, I, and most of our soul is neglected. And as a result, we, what we've done is we created a society where 60% of the society is depressed because they're doing nothing for their soul. And, I, and where Sikhi gives us the solution, it gives us Atma Karag. 
which is kirtan hai na which is sahaj paath hai na which is basically doing seva hathi seva hai na these are ways you feed your soul hai na and so we need to teach our community that basically aatma nu khuraak chahiye hai na and because we've been through immigrant experience so now what happens in immigrant experience hai na and we're all at different stages of that hai na now what happens in immigrant experience is the first generation the first uh, um, immigrant uh, ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਦੇਣੀ ਪੈਂਦੀ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੀ ਸਾਰੀ ਆਸਾ ਉਮੀਦਾਂ ਲਾਈਫ ਦੀ ਲਾਈਕ ਮਾਈ ਡੈਡ ਕੇਮ ਓਵਰ ਐਟ ਦੀ ਏਜ ਆਫ 18 ਹੀ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਬਟ ਹੀ ਹੈਡ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਮਾ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਸੈਂਟ ਹਿਮ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਐਂਡ ਸਰਵਾਈਵ ਹਨਾ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਨ ਯੂ ਗੋਟ ਬ੍ਰਦਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਸਿਸਟਰਸ ਦੇ ਵਾਂਟ ਯੂ ਟੂ ਗੈਟ ਅਕਰੋਸ ਯੂ ਗੋਟ ਜਮੀਨਾ ਦੈਟ ਯੂ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਪੇ ਫੋਰ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਆਲ ਦੇ ਗੋਟ ਦੇ ਡ੍ਰੀਮਸ ਸੋ ਹੀ ਹੈਡ ਟੂ ਗਿਵ ਅਪ ਆਲ ਹਿਸ ਡ੍ਰੀਮਸ ਹਨਾ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਨ ਵਾਟ ਹੈਪਨਸ ਇਜ਼ ਆਫਟਨ ਵੈਨ ਯੂ ਗੋਟ ਐਸ ਵਨ ਜਨਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਸੋ ਇਮੇਜਿਨ ਵੇਰ ਅ ਬਰਡ ਹਨਾ ਅ ਬਰਡ ਹੈਸ ਗੋਟ ਟੂ ਵਿੰਗਸ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਯਰ ਦੁਨੀਆਵੀ ਸਾਈਡ which is your worldly side and you have your spiritual side so that first generation of immigrants and it's basically is pushed really hard and had to put a lot of effort in their worldly side and because they had to basically pay their bills and so first generation is always hand to mouth and it's just about survival and mm-hmm. and then what happens in the second generation which is what I class as my generation probably maybe yours as well and we basically realize that we need to get good education otherwise we're going to have to work just as hard in the same manual labor jobs mm-hmm. so as a result we're very education focused you know and so now we've got one generation that basically put a lot of effort in its worldly side then we've got the second generation that also puts a lot of effort in its worldly side so we've had two generations that have neglected the spiritual side as a result how long is this bird going to keep flying at some point or the bus ho jandi hai and as a result i've seen so many sangats around the world we've got so much we're hard working community doesn't matter where we go we've all done well financially and successful but we've got now cars we've got houses we've got lands and everything but nanak dukhiya sab sansar and the andro we are still not kosh and and as a result that is because we've done so much on our worldly side we now need to redress we need to redress in our families we need to redress in our communities to rediscover our atmic side yeah. our spiritual side and this is the fundamental thing that i talk about in seek parenting course because what i saw was in all them years so many young people wanting to come into sikhi you know but sometimes the atmosphere in their families pushes them away yeah because there's too much kalesh there's too much basically a judgment there's generally there's too much dysfunctional families mm-hmm. and when we do the seek parenting course and now 10000 people have done it around and i've got another 43 cities on a waiting list mm-hmm. every yeah. month i'm doing it in a different city you know so if we were to access this parenting course where would we be able to like is there an online site or something we could sign yeah, up for yeah you can go to carlsa foundation or you can basically contact myself directly mm-hmm. through my social media etc and we will put you on that list but what we're doing this year because that was the bnt done to me in the toronto session of the will seek parliament if it's a usa city we put you to the front of the list so you get priority you get priority because that was the vachan i gave you know mm-hmm. so but we've got uk uh, cities we've got uh, europe cities i'm going to later on at the end of this year i'm going to go to australia again and i'm going to be doing stuff out there um but at the moment this weekend coming up we're going to be in fresno uh, sorry uh, we're going to be in fremont I'm going to be doing it again yesterday I did it in South Stockton and the families I've got all the testimonials now started coming through you know the feedback's been amazing yeah the support is there I know so and I mean it, it's it's definitely something that I think the community thinks they're lacking is like the the access to these resources and when I when I do that course you know one of the things I do at the beginning I describe what is a functional family and what is a dysfunctional family mm. now many people think they've got a functional family when they look at that they realize actually i've got a really dysfunctional family you know mm-hmm. because up on the other the we just grown up on that so we don't think any different yeah it's normal for us you know yeah and so when i show them oh yeah this is a functional family this is a functional family then people realize i've got a dysfunctional family then i say that you don't need wholesale change you need little tweaks and in the course i show all the little tweaks that we need to do mm-hmm. you know and then when she put them tweaks in the feedback i get is that you know i can you know i've had letters i've had uh, people send me messages or sometimes when i go back to the town the the pr that i get from many of them families i've had i've had i had a message which really hit touched me once where a young boy sent me a message saying that uh, paji before your course my dad used to beat me at home 
Mm. Now he doesn't beat me anymore. So that was worth going to that town. Yeah. I've had people that basically saying that we were about to get divorced and then after your course we realised we were looking at life in the wrong way. Mm. And we rethought about what we're doing in our lives. So so um, is there like a specific maybe underlying reason that you're seeing come up in a lot of these dysfunctional families? Maybe it's mental health issues. Maybe it's just, I guess, like cultural traditions that we have in our... Like, I mean, when they say that they have like depression, they have two chandas and they will kill you. You know, that's something that's like been taught to us. Like, you know, that's how to counter these issues. Yeah. But that's not a valid way to, you know, like go about it's them. It's not a valid way, but what it is, is this part, the first section in the Sikh parenting course is all about, this is how we do parenting, but this is how Guru Sev did parenting. So why don't we look at the way Guru Sev did parenting and look at what was the lessons in that and implement that into the way we do parenting? And, and then I talk about all the different things that happens in a parent. I talk about basically the psychology of a child. Because the psychology of child growing up in a Western country is very different to the psychology of child that was growing up in Punjab. And, uh, then mm. I talk about what's happened with us about the whole immigrant process. Then I also talk about the de-education of Punjab and how we were turned from Maharaja into the workforce. And, uh, and there's the psychological impact. And then the fact that we're killery all around the world. So many people's families brother could be in Canada, a sister could be in California, and their parents could be in Punjab or someone else in England. Mm. And as a result, your psychological sports system is not around you. And that has an impact. Your family isn't around you. Yeah. yeah. And then, then what we do is in part two, we, that is we look at uh, parenting in a macro level in part one. In part two, we look at it in a more micro level, where I show that most of the clears and most of the issues that we have in our family is from the words we use and the way we talk. Communication. And the tone of our voice. The communication yeah. we have. And I go into great depth on how to explaining how we should talk in our families. Anna, and then also the result on our atma of the way we talk. Mm. Anna, and these are topics that I don't think get touched in our community. Yeah. Which is why when I touch them, it has a huge emotional impact to the people in the audience. Which is why even though I've had the parenting course professionally recorded three times in New York, in Vancouver, in Toronto when we did it. I still haven't put it on live. I will be putting snippets on because what I find is that emotional journey that you go through when you attend the Sikh parenting course is something that people can only really do live. And I think that's important. I think it's important for people to basically reevaluate what we're doing in our houses mm -hmm. because I come from a, a family where my parents, I've never seen them argue. Not once in my life. Mm. And I'm, and I originally thought that was normal until I went around my friends' houses and everyone else's houses. And then I realized I'm very lucky to have the parents that I have. Yeah. So if my parents, they're both Gursiks, but if they disagree on something, they just go quiet. And I, but they will never have an emotional discussion as that. Yeah. They will have rational discussions. Mm -hmm. So they will maybe a couple of hours later then have a discussion or maybe the next day have a discussion. And it's a good way of actually having a discussion. Because your discussion should be rational, not mm -hmm. emotional. All decisions made or all conversations that are emotional, you often say too much or you say it with the wrong tone. Whereas when you have rational discussions, they're based on logic and sage. You know? And and so that was the way I was taught uh, growing up. Yeah. And even people like Bhai Rama saying really spiritual things that I managed to spend time with, they would say to me, Jigji Singh thought they got sage. You know? But that was thankful to my parents. And then I thought everyone's houses was like that. And then when I started doing camps and I realized and I got the feedback from young people, what's actually happening in the houses, I was really shocked. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and then I started doing talks on that because I was doing other talks anyway. I started writing talks on it, you know, how we should live in a house. And then what I found was they were the most in-demand talks that I was ever doing. And I realized that actually this is a huge issue. And I said, so then I wrote three talks and all the time, every time I was being taught, Jigji Singh, or parenting Allah, because mm -hmm. people go and tell their relatives you need to listen to this you need to listen to this you know and then so what i did eventually because i logistically because i'm gristi i don't take no pese i don't believe in selling any gurbani or sakya because sorry kaal purkdiya is not of mine to sell and you know so i never take any money show niskaram seva you know and so what i do or what i started doing is i thought this ain't gonna work because logistically i can't keep going to the same towns three times Anna, so I just turned it into a one-day course. Anna, and then when we turned it into a one-day course, we trialed it in Slough, we trialed it in a couple of towns, and the feedback we got was really positive. 
and then I've been tweaking it, and then now all all this time later, I, every still every time I still tweak it a little yeah. because everywhere I go, I learn a bit more and learn a bit more. Yeah. And but now we've got a range of things. We also done things like uh, in share charity, they set up Siki to the max. We've got all apps, etc. And they've done a book called Why Am I Here? Because this is, we have these things that quarterly strategy days and share charity. What they do is the Guru Sikhs that do seva and there we will just sit down as a group and we call it a strategy day. And uh, and there's one question on the board: What does the panth need now? And then we will have a discussion. What is our slew problems in a panth? What solution can we give? So 25 years a year earlier, the first solution that share charity created was Sikhi to the max. Huge project. Anna? And that's in every Goddara in the Panth, including yeah. the Varsavna. Yeah. Anna? And that was just basically famous. a few Monday in sl- in uh, UK that basically thought, well, how can we make our community understand and engage Gurbani better? Mm-hmm. Anna? And and so all the time. So a few years ago, just before COVID, one of the discussions we were having one of them strategy days was you if you if any Christian or any Jehovah's Witness comes around your house, they will have so many books. Anna? And we as a panth, we have amazing books. But what is the first book you would give someone? Let's say your neighbor is a Gora and he wants to learn about Sikhs. What is the first book you would give him? Let's say your child is about 13 years old and suddenly wants to learn more about Sikhi. What's the first book you would give him? Maybe like, I and mean, you, you can't we were really like, think, yeah. Really, there isn't a really strong defining book. Then when we thought, let's just write it. Mm-hmm. And then by the same thing, wrote it. It's called Why Am I Here? Anna? And, and does it, it explains like everything about our identity, who we are, yeah. what we represent. And what Guru Sev's message is for humanity um, in this capitalist society now. Mm. And that's why you can give it to e- any random person on the street. They will still understand it. Yeah. Anna? And so we're constantly, the other one is the Sikh marriage book, where basically we did a huge survey. Thousands of people responded mm-hmm. that were married about what issues you have in your marriage. And, and what time they had, what things you you think you learned, what works well in your marriage, what doesn't work in the marriage. And through all that survey and everything, all of that, we create a Sikh marriage book, which basically is now also available. Okay. So it's a good present to give someone just before they're married. And so it will I teach mean, you yeah. all the Sikhia of how to have a very successful marriage and where people have had pitfalls, what you should avoid, and what things that are good practice and what you should do. So we have things on parenting, we have things on marriage, we even got things on pregnancy, we have the Khalsa Learning Hubs, we have Khalsa Club camps now in eight countries, Anna, and all of these projects all work in ra- in tandem with each other. We've got Learn Gurmukhi, where you can basically learn Punjabi in two weeks. We've got Supersant, which is about learning Sikh history. We've got Simran Reminder for the people that spend too much on their phones, that tells them to go and do Simran. And there's so many solution-based things that we're doing and because we think that the next generation needs these, th- we're basically tooling up the next generation so they can navigate their Sikhi a lot better. Yeah. Anna? So, I mean, it, it seems like there's definitely a lot of resources that you have now that you're providing to the Sangat. Mm. Um, but if there's a few questions I wanted to dive deeper into that you like talked about, touched on, um, one is marriage. You know, it's a really hot topic. Um, Ananda Karaj, you know, who should be allowed to do an Ananda Karaj? Um, what are the Mariyadda ki agi Ananda Karaj? You know, like, kaun kaun? Because, I mean, even Pichaya, there was, like, some um, online very viral video of some guy wearing, like, a different type of hat during another cottage, you know? And that's ultimately something that, that's a lack of education in our community, you know? That why why are these things happening? Why I are think, we, you know? I think what it is, is I think North America is getting a bit of a wake-up call. Mm. Because North America is maybe not as thrir on their souls. We had this wake-up call in UK about 10 years ago. Okay. In UK, we, what we had is we had godwaris that would have wedding halls next to the godwara. Mm. And then 10 years ago, we had a big movement to shut them down because they were drinking and partying in them halls. Yeah. You know? And as a result, we basically had to create mass education mm. in our community to bring social change. You know? And as a result, our community woke up a bit. You know, what is the assaults of Anand Karaj? Anand Karaj is not something which is just like a... Um, um, you know, something that you just play with just because you want to have a special day. You, if you want to do it in your own way, go and do a court marriage. Yeah. But you don't have your guru coming to you. You go to your guru, Vyananda Karaj. Anna? And you've got this thing here about destination weddings. Yeah. It's a North America thing. It doesn't happen in UK. Okay. In UK, people just go to the Goddor and have their Ananda Karaj. Anna? So you, as a community here in North America, need to have a wide discussion 
is destination weddings a healthy thing for our community? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the, it's the, a fad. The, the problems we have here is that people, first of all, don't even think they're wrong. You know, so so it's not, it's a step before. I, I like would go back further. Yeah. I think what you're doing is looking at problems individualistically. Mm. You know? And they're just symptoms. For me, the biggest problem that you have here is you have talent, and but that talent has apathy. You know? You, there's not enough Pantic Jajma and not enough belief that we can change society. Mm. Whereas we have realized we can do it because we've been doing it. Yeah. You know? And so until you don't realize that in your Godware, if you're just going to keep allowing the time to be passed by Granthis just doing your prachar and non engagement of the next generation, mm. you're just delaying the inevitable. You know? So everything, so. because you've got a void of education. Mm-hmm. So at some point, you got to realize that your generation, just like we did in 1992, you have to take the Pants Jumivari on your shoulders and become solution-based in the community. And the best way to do that is actually become a voice in the community, a voice of reason, a voice of common sense, a voice of logic based on Gurbani. You know? So... Until you don't realize that you need dual language prachar in your godware and you guys need to create your own pracharaks. You, all of you, all you young people do presentations at schools and universities and workplaces. Why can't you do presentations at godware? Yeah. That's what we've been doing for the last 30 years. Definitely. And you, you know, I know some of my godware, and they're lucky if there's not dual uh, language based or one of us doing a talk every Sunday, they, they complain. The Sangha complains because they're so used to it. Okay. They demand it. Yeah, the language is a, is a very, you know, like it's a hot topic. Even on our podcast as well, we've had, hey, you know, so it's, let's it's, tackle this. Yeah. And I, because we used to get this as well. You know? Okay. So, because they're saying it from their perspective and everybody has their own lived experience. Mm-hmm. And so their lived experience is growing up in Punjab and basically saying Punjabi is, is a should for everyone. It's a, it's a non-negotiable, it's a minimum level. Well, that is for them. It's mm-hmm. not for me. Because it's not my fault that you moved to another country and I'm born there. And basically, and I've gone to a school where I've not learned that language. And it's only because of Maharaj's Girpa, I've got parents and grandparents that teach me in the, in, in the home. But most of the Punjabi schools are trying hard, but they're actually quite poor in what they're doing because mm-hmm. the resources they're using are outdated. Their structure is wrong. Yeah. Up. yeah, and so basically, you have to allow our youth, young people growing here, enough time and space to rediscover who they are, and then get to the point where they're speaking in Punjabi. Mm. Anna, and we have to be allowed that space. And so, if it's a case of we're going to fill that void to basically do it in English, that's fine. Maharaj didn't only invent Punjabi; Maharaj invented every language in the world, mm-hmm. and Gurbani is in multiple languages in the world. Let me tell you, the most important language of, guru, of, of our guru is the language of PR, or is the language of inclusivity. Mm-hmm. Anna? And so basically, I have no issues Anna, doing Purjar in English and Punjabi. Anna? Yeah. Because yeah. I know that yeah. the English is going to make him move on to Punjabi. Because as a person that talks in both languages, I realize that English is a very rough language. Anna? You will never hear opera in English. It will always be in Italian because mm. Italian flows. In the same way, the language of spirituality cannot be shared in English. Anna, the language of Gurbani, of, of, of Gurmukhi, has the beauty that you can only explain them concepts of spirituality in that language. So you have to then promote your level of thinking from an English based format to Gurmukhi. Mm. Because you can only explain it in them. Yeah. And that's why the even when I do dual language, by the end of it, I'm doing three quarters of, of Punjabi because it's the most beautiful language of explaining the deep levels of spirituality that the Guru Granth Sahib is explaining to us. Mm. And, uh, so it's an inevitability. But I see that you have to give young people a space so that they can understand the fundamentals of what they're talking about in Sikhi. If we don't do that you lose another generation. Yeah. And it was noticeable to me that when I started doing dual language prachar, how quickly that generation came back in the Godwari. Yeah. Because I'm very much a believer in bite-sized sikhi on Aetwars in Sundays. Mm-hmm. And, uh, or what we do in Derby, which was Khalsa Club. 
So what they do in Derby is that they will have a divan on a s- on a Friday evening, which is basically starts at about seven and it goes on to eight thirty or nine because the kids don't worry about homework and in their teenagers it's better they come to a godwara than they're going out to pubs and clubs, and uh, and it was a safe space where we had the parents and everything else. So we have the English based divan with Gurbani and then slowly moving on to the Punjabi on that as a learning thing mm-hmm. and then you have your main divan on a Sunday. So you're catering for both. Yeah. Anna? You're able to capture all the Sangat. Yeah. But as what is notable in Khalsa Club in Derby, in the eleven years that that's been going, I think over two hundred families have took an Amrit. Wow. So it's effective. Yeah. Anna? Mm-hmm. And so many people says so, so much things that would that are solution based. Anna? But what it is is the key thing is about communication. Anna? And we have to realize that if we're using English, I don't believe there's an issue with that. I think it needs to be done because we don't want to lose a generation. Mm-hmm. Anna? And as a panth, we got to realize we need to be solution-based. Anna? And the Punjabi is only going to be preserved Anna? if they're Sikhi. Otherwise, all it is is a regional language, which is now being eradicated anyway by Indian government policy. Anna? So fundamentally, what we should be teaching is Sikhi because that is the best way of actually preserving the language of Punjabi. Anna, because we haven't got our rivers anymore, so it's not Punjab anymore. Anna, oh, we started to go away again. Sara goes away again, and so we got to realize we can't just keep complaining. We got to basically start solving. Yeah. Anna, we can't keep playing the victim, is what it is, you know. Yes, yeah. and so as a community, mentality. we've got to realize that basically we're now living in these westernized countries, capitalist countries, Anna, and our children are under major pressure. We basically taught our children how to be workforce, you know, and now we've got to teach our children how to be Maharaja again. Yeah, back to being Maharaja. I know. But but I- if I may, before that, um, before we get to our next topic, which is regarding Maharajas and Bachai Dava, um, one main um topic that it's not talked about enough, at least from what I've seen, is mental health, right? And it's a crisis that's starting to uh, loom over a lot of our households. Um, parents maybe don't have the best relationships with their kids. They're suffering from all these illnesses, and one problem we see is that our parents don't even acknowledge that there are illnesses. You know, depression, nam, di koi chiz ni undi ya koi yeh ji. You know, so so how are we, let's say, as someone who may or may not be suffering from a mental illness, or at least think they are, how can we open up these channels of communication with our parents or our elders? So statistics in the NHS, National Health Service in UK. Have Say that sixty percent of the of the population is suffering from depression, mm. but most people live in a state of denial. Okay, now I do talks on on a huge number of subjects, but what I found is, and in, in the past I will touch on mental health, you know, because of my experience of treating people, you know, working with people with dementia and various other things, you know. But in the last few years, I've stopped talking on mental health. This is more of a personal thing, mm-hmm. and there's a reason for that. I think there's far better people in our community that are far better trained to do that, and uh, because I've realised it, it's a very deep subject, and it's better a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing, and it's better to have people that have a lot of knowledge. Yeah. And I think the, the other part of that is many of the people that speak on them subject have had personal experience of it, and I think that's important. And uh, for you to discuss the topic, uh, my my personal experience has been very different. My personal experience has been that basically I've been taught to be a fighter from a young age, and uh, and I've taught yeah. to be very solution based. Yeah, and that's what Sikhi uh, teaches as well. And as a result, I've built businesses. I've helped in seva. I've got managed to get by a good family. I've never been depressed in my life, and a big part of that is the fact that I was blessed with Amrit at a certain point in my life, and I did an ardas that sari uh, after taking Amrit. That all my life I would do Sangat of Ponche Hoy Gur Six. It was a personal ardas that I did mm-hmm. because I believe that you should be doing ardasa for the things that define your life, not for minor things. Mm-hmm. You know, as a result, I met Pai Rama Singh very quickly, who had a fundamental impact on my life. I met Pai Jeevan Singh, who had fundamentally just Tharik B Singh, Pai Janel Singh. There's so many Gur Six that I've done Sangat for. Even today, the Pai Paramji Singh Khalsa. You know, there's so many good six that Maharaj Kirpa have been part of. What I see is, I see everything in life as a blessing, and and every meeting with any good six as a blessing. Mm-hmm. And I believe that all we do in life is we collect blessings, and then one day all them blessings are like a jigsaw puzzle, 
and one day you reflect on it and it's a beautiful picture which is your jeevan yeah i know and as a result i can't believe i can't think of one day i've been depressed because all them things taught me all them good things taught me is how to do bhakti mm-hmm. and i won't say i'm a really accomplished bhagat but i will say i've got enough to basically know that i can see the world with beautiful eyes you have the tools to you know i know yeah and as a result marja kirpa i've never experienced them things because i've basically sat on a boat of nanak nam mm i know and we do saskara simran marja kirpa as a family we do amrit vela together and everyone's been doing it together for many many years i know many decades now and i believe that's created a, a protection system for myself yeah and from all of these ills in society and, and i'm not and saying yeah. that other people don't have it yeah and i but i say that works for me yeah and, and that's yeah. what i was just trying to go to say is that just because maybe one person has an experience it doesn't mean it's not there yeah exactly you know? and, and no i definitely think it's there because in camps and so many times in sangha that people talk to me about it mm. i you know i doubtless but for me if i just say to him you know my solution was jumping nam that's not something that can always basically work for them because basically for you to be able to jump an arm and do all them things you need to be in that right frame of environment mm-hmm. and with the right gursix and the right family and everything else i believe that marriage has blessed me and uh, to be in the family structure i am yeah to be with the people i am and i think that is just something that all i can say is marriage is tanwadia yeah you know but going on to this whole thing about mental health we as a community are very poor at talking about these things and we need to get better not just mental health alcoholism um basically conflict and what we call following the joneses is means of basically competing with each other mm. for materialism you know i believe that all of these things because like i said we need to rediscover the beauty of our sikhi you know and that's because of all of this two generations of basically just concentrating on the material side of our lives we need to have that redress with the atmic side of our lives mm. and and i think so for me i looked at this whole thing and i thought well there's so many problems what's the best way of solving all these problems and i thought i can't we can't just go and solve this problem this solve them you're constantly firefighting so the best way i looked at is let's start with parenting because you're starting fresh with a new generation and if we get young people to do bhagati from day 1 which is something that we were never blessed with so i came into sikhi at the age of 18 so i believe 18 years of my life i wasted mm. and so what i teach parents do is that your child has less access to calm growth more one god so as a result if they do bhagati at a small age they will go a lot faster and then by the time they get to teenage and stuff like that so let me give you an example of of the way i see society works in our community mm. ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਹਾਵਤ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਯੰਗ ਬੱਚੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਉਹ ਐਲਤਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਸੋ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਵੈਨ ਦੇ ਗੈਟ ਟੂ ਟੀਨੇਜ ਇਅਰਸ ਦੇ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਮੌਜ ਮਸਤੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਦੇ ਗੋ ਆਊਟ ਪਬਿੰਗ ਕਬਲਿੰਗ ਐਟਸੈਟਰਾ ਜਵਾਨੀ ਚ ਦੇ ਵੈਨ ਦੇ ਗੋ ਇਨਟੂ 30 40 ਇਅਰਸ ਆਊਟ ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰੀਆਂ ਦਾ ਭਾਰ ਪੈ ਗਿਆ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਗੋ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਿਲਟੀਜ਼ ਆਫ ਦ ਵਰਲਡ ਦੈਨ ਵੈਨ ਦੇ ਗੈਟ ਟੂ 60 ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਰੱਬ ਨੂੰ ਲੱਭਣ ਚਲ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਦੈਟਸ ਰੀਅਲੀ ਪੂਰ ਵੇ ਆਫ ਲਿਵਿੰਗ ਯਾ so the way i t- we push it is jadon chote niyane hunde elta kan par naal simran kan ha na jadon teenagers hunde a ohna kol hum 15 15 16 17 years of bhakti hogi so they're not going to do much masti but they're going to basically do their sports do the education be sensible but they're going to keep their rath because they realize that public clubbing and sleeping around and doing drugs is not a good way of living because mm-hmm. that 15 years of bhakti is taught them that when they get to 30 40 years jumewari in the bar sariyan te pai janda hai ha na sariyan jumewari chakni pendi hai because we're all gristi ha na so you do have parents to look after you do have children to look after you do have to mortgages and taxes to pay but you don't worry about coming home and thinking well my husband's going to slap me about because basically your husband is a amritdari rathwan gursik yeah he doesn't drink he doesn't do drugs and your wife is basically your husband's not thinking my wife just going to be speaking and just shouting at me and doing all this other stuff because she's a sajali jeevanwali nitne me bb as well and so you've created a balance where you're supporting each other and then when you get to 60 it's not like to see rabnu laban challeya to see the rabnu lab leya because you got 60 yeah. years of bhakti yeah and i think that's a better way of living mm. so when i looked at all of these things 
I thought, well, we can constantly be firefighting or we can be really strategic and look at preventing preventative ways of improving our community. And I thought the best way to do that is create a generation of really good parents who basically create a generation of young children that do bhagati at a young age. Mm. And that is the vision that I see is a good way of dealing with all the other issues because they're all systematic of the fact that we don't understand Sikhi enough or we don't do enough bhagati or we're too much on screen time. And we're basically, basically the way we look at the other gender because people are on TikTok Anna, and these people are just swiping every day. Anna, they don't realize that every time they swipe, they're swiping away their Sikhi. Mm. Anna? And because we're so used to that mode of behavior, you know, and this is this is just the way we go. So I try to do in that seven-hour course, it's very content-heavy, you know, and I recognize that. And I know that's not ideal, but because I'm only going to be in that city maybe once in my life, you know, because I've got so many other cities to go to, yeah. you know, I mentioned it in the course, you know, it's been a long time. You know, I've seen a lot in my life. I mean, Nubi Hajibi in Land, they were when I go there, they will say to me, Nojwan Prachara Kagya, Nojwan Prachara Kagya, Jigji Singh, and in Punjabi, the English, which Bolna and the Sangat all come together and everything. And then now I say to them, I say, basically, maybe you're not Nojwan Raya, maybe you're not Tolia. Time goes quick in your life. Yeah. Anna? And, uh, and then I remember one state secretary, he's a really nice guy, but he's a bit shukli. Anna? He goes, Koi ni jigji sing tumi rang le agar. <laughs> and I, and I yeah. said to them uh, on the stage, I said, Bhai sir, mein kadda rang sakada. You see these as tole, we see these as kaalpuk tiya chithiya. Mm. And I, eh kaalpuk maharaj ne inni piyar na chithi lekha daaya ke jigji sing tera bhi hon samahan nagaya, tumi hon thor ja simran kar le agar. And I, so we all have a limited time, but we have a lot to do in the panth. Mm. And for me, all the Panth's bache are our bache. And so if we can create solutions where we can talk to all the parents on a mass level about how we can create more spiritual environment, a more gurmat environment, because I don't believe, I'm not very much into Babbe, I'm not too much into Jatibandiya, all that stuff. What I believe is that basically that our Panth should be physically strong. Our Panth should be educationally strong. Our bond should be financially strong, but ultimately our bond should be spiritually strong. Mm. And we need to work together as a community and stop living in little bubbles and little groups and insular way of thinking and start thinking as a bond on a more globalized level and create solutions. Sikhi to the max was a global solution. Mm. We never, at that time, by the same thing and all of them probably didn't realize that they were going to create something so big. But ultimately, it was, it's become a globalized solution. I mean, the and support I, was there. The demand was there, you know. Yeah. So. And so we have so many problems in the Panth. We have to work together. All the talent in the Panth has to come together. So we, as a Panth, got to be better at communicating with each other. One of the last points we wanted to get to was this concept of the Padshah Shahi Dava. Um, it's something you've mentioned before, how we used to be, Mah- be Maharaji. And now we've been... Um, pretty much taken down to the level of just workers and employees. And that's obviously affected our psychology. It's affected us as a community. And, you know, there's obviously some elements of the community that are looking to balance back or bounce back. So what would you say to those? I would basically say that there's everything in our panth comes around in circles. There's times when we have to reintroduce concepts in our panth that sometimes we forget. I know. And that could be in the fact of the way we do Kirtan, how we're now re- reintroducing rags. It could be the fact that we basically have to have to rediscover our grunts you know, or other things. There's so many things that come and forth, you know, getting our Goddore Azad, which happened in the 20s and still maybe needs to happen again now. Mm-hmm. So every, a lot of things come in circles. You know? The way I look at it, as a Panth, we have spent virtually all our, from the beginning of Guru Sahib to today, in a state of Sangarsh. First we were fighting the Mughals, and then after that we were fighting the British, and now we're fighting Brahman Raj. So as a month, we've been constantly losing our leaders, constantly losing our things at a young age, a lot of Shahidiyya. Now that's been important because we're a calm that's a spirit-born nation, and that's built on the Kuhn of our Shahids. So I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but by coming out here, 
it allows some of us to have a bit of saa jidda kende saa le sakde ha khol mil jandi hai and it ya ke saa le ke then it gives us an opportunity to rediscover aspects of our sikhi that maybe we've neglected for a time ha na and i believe it's a good thing that we're now reading more of our granth i think it's a good thing that we're now understanding our ithihas a lot better i think it's a good thing that we're now rediscovering our rags or other things like that in terms of more about what guru sahib the wider picture of what guru sahib was teaching us you know and one of them concepts now that's been discussed quite a bit is bashai dava you know and people have huge discussions on bashai dava and i think that's a fantastic thing because we should be having discussions because people should be able to look at a concept from loads of different perspectives and through discussions we come into some commonality you know because if we look at what's actually happened to us you know and the way i talk about this in talks if you talk to a billionaire you know and you ask him what do you want in life because you already got unlimited money they will say i want three things i want good weather you know I want organic food and I want time. You know? And we look at I look at them three things and I think well that's what we had in Punjab. We had good weather, we had organic food and we had uh time. Mm-hmm. You know? And by coming out here while in California you still have the good weather and maybe some of the organic food. You know? But if you go to Canada, UK and some of the other areas, we don't have great weather. Yeah. You know? Um we don't have organic food, we have GM food and we have no time. Mm. You know? And so it's arguable that we've actually made a backward strip. You know? You know, you can put that argument forward. And so we have to rediscover who we are, why we are and what we're doing. You know? And having that discussion I think is important because we were Maharaja and the key thing with us was that we owned our land. and you have to when you look at is why is punjab so unki you know why is the revolutions of that south asian area most of them come from punjab you know because the qurbaniya for independence in 1940s and earlier were all coming from punjab you know the stand against the moguls all came from punjab the raj after you know we lost you know we had two things both us and pai garja singh and they were like no sikhs are left mm-hmm. and these things said no we're still here Yeah. Anna, and 50 years later we have Karl Saraj. Anna. So the way my father explained this to me when I was young, he goes, "The thing about Khalsa, the Khalsa is the people that make the impossible possible." Mm. That's who we are. Yeah. That's who we are built as. Anna, the things that people can't even dream, not only do we dream them, we make them happen. Trying Anna, and that should be our mindset even today. Anna. And so when we look at this whole concept, The thing with Punjab, Banda Singh Bahadur gave us our own lands. This is what the rest of India doesn't have. Mm. They still have their landlords, their talkers and their rajas, you know. We as individual Sikhs had our own lands. And the thing is when you have your own land, you become maharaja. Yeah. There's a level of authority. Yeah. So. Uh, and so if you don't agree with a government or you don't agree with a policy, you can take a stand against it. You know? Because if you're an, doing a nokri you know they will just chuck you out that nokri and then thode bacche bhukhe mar de there goes your paycheck yeah you know yeah whereas you can chuck the asa of our nokri we still got our land as he bachiyan ne fevi khana khana hai so as a result it gives you a level of autonomy it gives you a level of voice but on top of that you put gursikhi and all that atiyas and all that spirit and that gurbani and the amritvela and everything it push you on a next level yeah immortal yeah and so basically we were them kind of people and then what happened is after maharaja rajit singh's raj obviously the british took over in uh, rest of india quite quickly it took them a long time to they were just observing maharaja rajit singh's raj anakni se ki onan share undi hmm and because hari singh nalwa e dende gur sikh se ke hana akali phula singh etc after maharaja rajit singh uh, ranjit singh passed away for i believe it was 10 or 11 years they were just killing assassinating each one of his sons when he leaders and eventually they basically took over punjab you know and then we know about they took the our shastras away 300 bullet carts were sent to calcutta they paraded them 
in Calcutta, all our cannons of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, mm. I've got an actual image of it. And really? I, it was like someone did a hand drawing of that scene of that day. Uh, and w- of what is it? Of of all our Shastras of Punjab, Maharaja Ranjit Singh were taken and shown in Calcutta. It was paraded there. And then they were melted down and turned into the railroads. Our Shastras. Our Shastras. Wow. Of Punjab, 300 bullet carts. Wow. I know. Yeah. And then that was made, because you understand, they understood economics. Mm. They needed to transport goods, so they used our Shastas to make the railroads. Yeah. I know. And then what they did was, for, through King's University, London, they sent a professor to Punjab to de-educate Punjab. Right. So they and took the weapons, they started Because Maharaj Ji Singh had such high-level education for Bibiya. So every Bibiya on up end had a high level of education. And every BB in our band could teach the children how to do Santhya from the Guru Granth Sahib. Anna? And, and basically, so the money that was given for your Shastar, they would give you like a small amount of money. The money for your uh, Bhotiya was three times as much. Than the Shastars. Than the Shastars. Wow. And that was done intentionally. Because the Punjabi that we read taught now in Punjabi schools is a colonialized version of Punjabi. Mm. That's why we are taught Bababol. Ball is not a Punjabi word. Ball is an English word. Sure. Anna? Because, you know, tennis ball, football. Anna? But basically, the potiya of Jasa Singh Alwalia, who grew up in the household of Guru Gobind Singh, is what is now trying to be rediscovered by Professor Gurinder Pal and other Guru Sikhs like that. Mm. Because when you read Punjabi through that poti system, you automatically have learn the words of the Guru Granth Sahib. And so a child can straight away become a party of the Guru Granth Sahib. That is what we are trying to rediscover now. Anna? So we were de-educated. And we as uh, citizens of Punjab, and bear in mind, Punjab is not a small place. You know, it's probably bigger than Holland. It's bigger than many of the European countries, Switzerland. You know, you've got 25 million people there. And that is only our small version of Punjab since 1947. When you look at the whole of Punjab, and uh, before 1947, it's a massive country. I think in Saving Punjab by, by Guru Singh mentions about you could probably put Italy and a number of other countries together and Punjab mm-hmm. was bigger than that. Yeah. And we often underestimate the power of Punjab. And, uh, that Punjab was basically not only feeding, why was Maharaj and Jee Singh so rich? Because the, the lands of Punjab were feeding not only India, they were feeding China, they were feeding South Russia and the Middle East. Wow. Because that was the center of trade. Mm. Anna? And it was only in 1947, and the Brahmins were very sly with us. They intentionally made sure that Lahore never stayed in Punjab. Yeah. Anna? Because Lahore was where our brain was. Anna? And Lahore is where Atiyas was, and it's so close to Nankana Seb. Anna? And anyone with any logic, the Radcliffe line was done intentionally to destroy Punjab. Mm-hmm. It was two things they did at that time. Anna? Number one, they intentionally created Pakistan and Bangladesh. Why was that done? So you divide the, Hindu, the Muslim vote, so it doesn't matter who wins the elections, it will always be a Brahmin. Mm. And that's what's happened. Whether it's Congress or BJP, it's always Brahman Raj. Yeah. I know. Outside is just the Kava, that what they show us, but it's the Brahman Raj p- policies. And so one was so that the Muslims could never become uh, leaders in that country. So take their vote bank and take a sizable part of it and put it in Pakistan, put a sizable part of it in, Pakistan, in Bangladesh. And then the other threat to them was Punjab. So split Punjab in the middle and intentionally give Lahore away from this Punjab, yeah. and so that this Punjab will always be reliant on Delhi. Mm. So they split... There they would th- never be any kind of issues of uh, farmer suicides or anything like that. There would be no issues around 84 and language issues or anything else like that. You know, all the issues we've had since 1947, if we had Lahore. Yeah. Can you even Amritsar and Lahore, they were considered like twin sister yeah. cities. If you almost. fly on a plane and you're taking off from Amritsar Airport, you see the lights of Lahore. Yeah. It's so close. Yeah. Anna? And Lahore was our Rajasthani. It's Maharaj Ranjit Singh's Rajasthani. Mm-hmm. It's where our Guru Sahib's were Shaheed. Anna? Guru Arjan Dev Ji, etc. Anna? It's a major thing for us. Anna? And that was where our strength of Punjab was. Mm-hmm. You look at our Morje, all our Godra Zad movement, 
it all started on that side it was sakan and kana sahib saka pancha sahib mm. sikhi was stronger on that side my grandfather who witnessed 1947 he would tell me because sikhi was much stronger on that side wow and and that was intentionally done to basically destroy who we are and that was part of us so the gorian made us into the british raj made us into the workforce and this was done to take our strength away from us yeah so, and yeah and we so. have to understand that our lands went as far as delhi and mm. but intentionally haryana was made intentionally himachal was made and and so we have to understand all the things that are happening to us but ultimately what we got to look at is we are now living in the west we're living in the west because basically we have been made into this workforce and we've been forced to come here and punjab is being ethnically cleansed and mm. it was done through basically uh, first through genocide and then secondly through drugs and now through immigration and and that ethnic cleansing is taking place and we as a community have to look at is basically you can live here as much as you want you can live here and have as much lands as you want but you're never going to have a city darbar sahib in california mm. you're Karta never going to have a case gar sahib here mm. you're never going to have the ruha fateh gar sahib here and so no matter what that is where we're going to be my binti to all the people that are listening is that we can talk a lot about many things and mm. but my binti from the guru six that i've done sangat with is apna jeevan banao yeah jeevan banao inna simran karya karo ke maharaj jithe tus wherever you look all you see is guru six mm-hmm. and and if they're not guru six by looking and listening to you they want to become guru six yeah you maharaj we can they are uttam sangat uttam ho gaye you know we need mm. the sangat of the guru six so yeah uche suche jeevan banai ke and look at the panth in a solution based way mm. don't get dragged into people and their clone kind of behavior and where they just make you clash with other groups and other groups for the yeah. sake of clashing yeah and as a result our so much of our time is wasted and energy is wasted or get into positions where all we're doing is duplicating the same things mm. and i like people do in godwar they just keep in building multiple godwar and just keep duplicating it's too much energy is wasted and instead what we need to be looking at is this is the panth this is the skill set we're now developing as a population realize that 90% of our population doesn't come to the godwara and we only see him when we got nagar kirtan only 10% of our community comes to the godwara and but we still got to be talking to that 90% mm. so we got to create educational programs like we're doing with the seek parenting course that engages that 90% because the talent in that 90% is what's going to run California. Yeah. The best youth that is going to run California for the next 50 years are still Munne that haven't come to the Godwara. Yeah. Because let me tell you all the youth that's come out of UK that is very active in what they do all of us were Munne. Mm-hmm. None of us were given sikhi on a plate. Yeah. We all felt that we had to earn our sikhi. Yeah. You had to Anna? find and there's reason. so many people like that here. and what the good six that are basically here already in the godware your job is to create access for that 90% to reengage the godware mm-hmm. and and that is the fundamental thing and so start doing dual language prachar and but the most important thing is that your youth cannot re- leave your prachar to godware grantees yeah you youth that are grown up here the you understand the youth more that have grown up here mm-hmm. so find your voice and start talking to that youth engaging yeah. that youth and using your godwara platforms using these podcasts but ultimately what is the destination you're taking this youth through to that is gurmat naam that yes, is gurmat naam and yeah Thikai. and even gurbani says you know sarbro ka khad naam so mm. gurbani is the solution to all our problems it's the solution to ultimately what the the goal we want to get to so smapti karde ha apan sade naal ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫੇਰ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਭਾਈ ਜਗਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਫਰਮ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਫਾਊਂਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਐਂਡ ਚੈਰਿਟੀ ਅਮ ਹਿਟ ਹਿਮ ਅਪ ਔਨ ਇੰਸਟਾਗ੍ਰam ਐਂਡ 올 ਯਰ ਅਦਰ ਸੋਸ਼ਲ ਮੀਡੀਆਸ ਐਜ਼ ਵੈਲ ਯਾ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਜਗਜੀਤ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਅਮ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਮਾਈ ਸੋਸ਼ਲ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਇਜ਼ ਡਾਊਨ ਓਕੇ ਹਨ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਆਫ ਦ ਸੇਵਾ ਔਰ ਐਵਰੀਥਿੰਗ ਵੀ ਡਿਡ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਕਿਸਾਨ ਮੋਰਚਾ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਹਨ ਸੋ ਸਮਟਾਈਮਸ ਇਟ ਕਮਸ ਅਪ ਸਮਟਾਈਮਸ ਇਟ ਗੋਸ ਡਾਊਨ ਸਾਨੂੰ
ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਨੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਸੁਣਾਉਣੀ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪੀ ਸੁਣਾ ਦਣੀ ਆ ਇਹ ਸੋਸ਼ਲ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਕੰਪਨੀਜ਼ ਐਂਡ एवरीथिंग ਐਲਸ ਐਂਡ ਆ ਇਟਸ ਜਸਟ ਇਟਸ ਜਸਟ ਇਟਸ ਜਸਟ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਦੇ ਖੇਡ ਐਂਡ ਆ ਅਲਟੀਮੇਟਲੀ what we need to do is all get better at communicating with each other like i said become more solution based if people want to get in touch with me if they want to book the seek parenting course get in touch with carlsa foundation or contact us direct like i said because of the vachanes we are going to be spending more time looking at america but anywhere in the world we will come and do that and that is all free all you got to do is talk to your local community set up a venue we have all the marketing we do everything for you we will just hand it all to you it's all very streamlined i normally come in on a friday evening and basically do the course on a saturday we do the sunday the one i fly out on a sunday evening and back at work on a monday it's basically very time efficient but mm-hmm. as a result in your community it's a catalyst for bringing real change and making people think about their family environments mm-hmm. and how to create a better environment for their children yeah. and i think me as well i speak for a lot of the pont when i say we really support your seva and we look forward to uh, learning more about the things that you have to tell us wah ikra so samapti kar den ji wah ji ka khalsa wah ji ki fateh